I welcome everyone to my channel. And again stories from life. A novel that will change your life. Martha Shields right pointing arrow hope for happiness. For the sake of a few thousand dollars, you can look, Claire thought and got out of the car. Claire fell in love with this house as soon as she stepped through the door. Although the rooms were large, they were a stark contrast to Jake's coldly luxurious penthouse apartment. The walls were painted in warm colors and the floors were covered with thick carpet. It was a house in which one could easily imagine children running around briskly. Jake silently followed her from room to room. He followed every glance carefully, but didn't say a word until they were in the dining room. There was a white tablecloth right on the carpet. Lunch was served on it, a candelabra stood in the middle, and a bottle of champagne was waiting in an ice bucket. It's non-alcoholic, Jake finally said. I thought we should celebrate. He shrugged. Claire turned away. Let's go upstairs. Gloomy. Jake followed her up the carpeted steps. There's also a surprise. Furnished room. That's why I didn't tell you anything. Let me guess. You already bought a big bed for the bedroom where we could upgrade the house. He kissed her quickly, as if afraid she would pull away. Actually, I plan to do it right downstairs. No, this is, he opened the door, a nursery. Claire froze. The room was furnished in soft blue tones. A white crib stood in the middle of the room, next to it was a bath for bathing the baby. A table for changing clothes, a high chair on wheels and a children's corner with toys and books. The walls were covered with fabric. Finally Claire turned to Jake. He stood leaning against the door frame. His whole figure showed tension. Well, what do you think? Thanks. She tried her best not to think. Tears welled up in her eyes and she clenched her hands into fists. You tried really hard, didn't you? Well, they helped me a little. Fortunately, I found a designer who agreed to work literally around the clock. You not only decided where we should live, but also determined the gender of the child in advance. Jake looked worriedly at Claire. In his eyes, she read a clear misunderstanding. What? She gestured around the room. Blue tones, Jake. It means boy. Yes? Stop it. Everyone knows this. I don't know anything. Yes, and from where? I never communicated with children or future parents. And I didn't care what any color meant. What do people do when they don't know the gender of the baby? Does he really not know? They don't furnish the nursery in pink or blue. You yourself named the color for the designer. Otherwise he would have chosen yellow, green, God knows what. Right? Jake rubbed his chin. Yes, he asked me what color to make the nursery. When I said blue, for some reason he congratulated me. And I thought, see what you've done. Claire exclaimed in a trembling voice. You decided everything yourself. He took her hands in his. Do not say that, I just wanted to help. I thought you knew by now that I don't want you to decide for me. But you didn't learn anything, didn't understand anything. Nothing. Let me explain everything. You work so hard. You feel bad in the morning, and by the evening you are exhausted to the limit. I feel helpless because there is nothing I can do to help you. So I decided to do at least something, especially with your blessing. With desperation in his eyes, he put his hands on her shoulders. Claire, tell me you forgave me. Say you'll let me make your life easier. You can't do everything in the world. You are very business. You are very independent. But even super ladies need help sometimes. Claire looked into his honest eyes. Claire looked into his honest eyes. He seemed sincere, and she desperately wanted to believe him. Here is another piece of her independence disappearing. But then she remembered the vow she had made to herself on the first day of their stay at the ranch. She promised herself then not to push him away, as his father always did. And not to blame for trying to control her life. But she was still afraid that he might hurt her. This is quite possible, because she loves him, but he does not love her. 
but she wants Jake to love her, so she must teach him how to love. The main thing here is patience. Patience and hope that one day he will understand. Embracing her husband, she clung to his chest. You did badly. Very. I'm sorry. He squeezed her tighter in his arms. But I was really sure that you knew about my intentions to buy a house, yes. I knew. That's the only reason I didn't leave right now. He took her by the chin. So you forgive me? Do you want to leave the house? I shouldn't have done this. It will only encourage your bad behavior. What if I swear I'll never buy a house again without your permission? No, better promise that you will consult with me in everything that concerns me and the child. I promise. I swear. Jake pulled her close and kissed her. Claire sighed. It may sound contradictory, but I need your help, Jake. I need you. A month ago, the expression on his face would have frightened her. I need you too, my dear. I also want to be needed by you. Really, Jake? This is true? That's more than true. They sealed their reconciliation with a kiss and a tear rolled from under Claire's clenched eyelids. She believed him. Two days later, at half past seven, Jake entered the room in front of Claire's office. Mrs. Hamby, are you here now? A plump, middle-aged woman pointed to Claire's door and whispered, shish. She is sleeping. An icy wave of anxiety washed over Jake. What with her? She feels bad. What are you? No. The secretary smiled cheerfully. It's normal in her position. When I myself was carrying my first child, for the first four months I wanted to sleep all the time. Jake quietly opened the door. Claire slept with her head in her hands. You should have called me. She fell asleep only ten minutes ago. Jake nodded. Go home, Mrs. Hamby. I'll take care of her myself. The secretary smiled broadly and began to get ready. I don't doubt it. Jake walked over to Claire and touched her gently on the shoulder. Five more minutes, she muttered. Damn it. She works too hard. She needs help both at home and at work. He will talk with Jim Gordon. He may well agree to take on at least part of her work, but at home. They would still need a babysitter. Since Claire decided not to leave her job, wouldn't he send his child to this nightmarish institution called a kindergarten? Or what about a baby center? Maybe you need to find a nanny in advance? She'll help Claire prepare for childbirth and things like that. Yes, it was a great idea, but somehow Jake felt that Claire wouldn't like it. No, he won't hire anyone without her knowledge. He will simply interview several women, select one or two of the most suitable and let her know. He would do exactly as she asked, he would help her, but the final decision would be Claire's. Yes. This time she will be satisfied. Everything blurred in Claire's eyes. For the hundredth time that day, she closed her tired eyes. She couldn't concentrate on Pony's bills. No. It's probably something more than pregnancy fatigue. The numbers she saw on the computer screen had nothing to do with people. The numbers she saw on the computer screen had nothing to do with people. And she couldn't help wondering how Mrs. McDonald's was running her pet shop, or whether Mr. Chase had finally gotten his taxes sorted out. And she couldn't think of the shortbread pie that his wife used to bake for her for Christmas without longing. Standing. Claire stretched and walked to the window to take in the view of the Rocky Mountains once more. For the past few days she has been going to talk to Jake about work. What will he say when she informs him of her decision to leave? Claire decided to return to the Whitaker, where she was talking not to boring columns of numbers, but to real people. She doesn't need this job. Firstly, she has already become pregnant, which means that money for artificial insemination will not be needed. And secondly, she is married to Jake, which means that her whole life is also provided. She hasn't touched her bank account since they got married and only used it to pay rent. It wasn't that the job wasn't up to her. On the contrary, she found that there was nothing super complicated about her. She just didn't want to work here. Over the past month, 
Claire has learned that real independence doesn't have to be unlimited money. This is an opportunity to choose the work that you love. And by marrying her, Jake gave her that opportunity. The thought made Claire shudder. She never thought of their marriage from that perspective. And now she only felt her love for Jake more strongly. In addition, she does not leave him to the mercy of fate. Jim Gordon is more than capable of filling the position. And in general, he was originally the first candidate. No, Jake doesn't need her for this job. He needs her in another way, and this is much more important. Claire smiled as she remembered this morning. Since it turned out that she was pregnant, his desire not only did not weaken, but on the contrary, yes, there have been some setbacks, like this house purchase. Now Claire finally understood everything. She gets angry if Jake decides anything without her. Not because she wants independence, but because she wants to be always needed by him. How Hank can't do anything without Alex. She wants to be needed by him, to be loved. Sighing, Claire returned to the patiently waiting computer. Why waste time? Jim had already assured her that everything was in order, and she did not find a single mistake in the work of her subordinates. She is not needed here, but it is difficult for Whitaker's clients to do without her. Why not talk to Jake? There are many benefits to her solution. She can arrange with Mr. Whitaker to give her the opportunity to take on not so many clients so that there is enough time for the child. And Jake will be pleased. And since they will not work together, this will create some illusion of independence. Until now, it was good and pleasant for her to work under the supervision of her own husband, but what would happen if they, like in any family, started to get into trouble? No, the best option is to go back to your old job at Whitaker. Of course, if Mr. Whitaker would agree to take her back after such a sudden departure. Sitting down at the table, Claire picked up the phone, but changed her mind. It's better to see the former boss in person. She grabbed her coat and purse and headed for the door. Mrs. Hamby, I'm leaving. The secretary was surprised at first, then smiled. Good afternoon, Mrs. Anderson. Go home, rest. It's good for you. Claire smiled back. When Jake comes in, tell him I'm on my way home. Maybe call him now? No, he'll just worry. Tell him I'm all right and I'll be waiting for him at home for dinner. She waved her hand and left. Yawning. Claire inserted the key into the lock and opened the door. Mr. Whitaker received her admirably and almost begged her to return. To be continued, if you like the video subscribe to my channel and press the bell to nothing don't miss.